Welcome to this uh, afternoon session of the BioExcel Summer School. We are going to talk about the BioExcel Building Blocks Library here. My name is Adam Hospital Gask. I'm coming from the IRB Barcelona Institute for Research in Biomedicine. Uh, and the work that I'm going to present you today, uh, it's basically done by these uh, two main developers, Pau Andrio and Janice Bayarri. Uh, they both will be with us in this uh, in the live session that we have uh, the last session today uh, well where we are going to do a hands-on with one of our uh, tutorials the protein ligand complex uh, MD setup tutorial using the bioxel building blocks so we are now in the first session of this afternoon which is the theory behind the bioxel building blocks which is uh, supposed to be 40 minutes long uh, after that, we will have 30 minutes of uh, how to use this library, this BioExcel building blocks library to uh, build biomolecular simulation workflows. And after that, uh, we'll have the query and answer session where uh, the three of us will be here answering uh, uh, your questions. Then we'll have a virtual break and uh, finally we'll have the hands-on session, the tutorial, the protein ligand complex MD setup using the Jupyter notebook and uh, and the BioXL building block uh, library. So starting from the beginning, uh, I know that uh, you had a nice introduction about the BioXL Center of Excellence this morning, in the, uh, yesterday morning in the first session, but uh, let me just summarize a little bit what is the BioXL Center of Excellence. Uh, we are a hub for biomolecular modeling and simulations with a, a quite uh, a, a particular expertise, which is the, this area of expertise here from uh, anatomistic uh, structure, uh, the quantum level to the macromolecular and also uh, macromolecular complex uh, structure. Um, the center is uh, uh, started four years ago as a Horizon 2020 uh, project from the European Commission and includes a lot of different European partners. Uh, we are one of them, this is an IRB, but as you can see, there's a lot of different partners and you will uh, meet uh, some of these today and these days in the BioExcel uh, Summer School. Um, the Center of Excellence wants basically to enable better science and to do that, we have three main key points. The first one is to improve the performance and functionality of our key applications and I will introduce you what are these key applications in a minute. Uh, we want to provide support to non-experts, to both non-experts and to advanced users. And finally, we want to develop user-friendly computational workflows. Our key applications are these ones. I'm sure that you all know them. Uh, that's exactly why you are here uh, today in this BioExcel Summer School. You want to see how uh, to use these key applications, GROMAX for the molecular dynamic simulations, PMX for the free energy calculations, HADOC for the protein-protein docking uh, processes and the QMMM, CP2K and CPMD for the QMMM hybrid approach. Um, we want to provide support and we do that uh, from different training uh, events. We have a lot of different webinars. You can take a look at the bioexcel.eu webpage and you will find more than 30 different webinars for uh, biomolecular simulation tools. We have many documentation and uh, training uh, material uh, also linked in the in the BioExcel uh, website. We have all the events, of, of course, published there. And we are pro providing support not just to academy, but also to uh, industry, as you can see in the news here. But what uh, it's really interesting for us uh, in this particular session of the BioExcel Summer School is uh, the third key point, which is the workflows part, which is to design, deploy, and make available uh, solution-oriented biomolecular workflows. And we want to do that with a particular focus, which is the excellence in usability. So we want to uh, build these workflows uh, being easy to use, easy to share, easy to reproduce, and easy to be uh, not just uh, built, but also executed in different infrastructures and different platforms. And that's why uh, uh, these partners here from the BioExcel um, uh, Center of Excellence joined together and started with this uh, 
uh, with the development of these BioExcel uh, building blocks. You will see the story. So biomolecular workflows. Uh, at that moment, four years ago, when we started the BioExcel Center of Excellence, we, we sat down all of these partners and we uh, thought about uh, the challenges of the biomolecular workflows. So basically, biomolecular workflows, simulation workflows are uh, built from a number of tools which perform different tasks. Uh, some of these tools or some of different tasks are uh, summarized here. We usually have file format conversions inside the uh, workflow. As we have so many different formats, we for sure will need to convert between one or another. We maybe have uh, some um, structure modeling to do. Maybe we're interested in molecular dynamic simulations, or maybe quantum mechanics simulation, maybe a, a hybrid approach, QMMM. Of course, if we produce trajectories, we need to analyze these trajectories. Uh, we have also docking software if we need to dock a protein with a ligand or protein with a protein. Uh, we can compute free energy uh, um, values. We maybe need a, a, a ligand parameterization to use the ligand in a molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, we maybe are interested in chemoinformatics, in something uh, involving small molecules, and data analytics is something that is really popular nowadays. So what all of these different tasks basically means that we are dealing with many different tools. So again, uh, molecular dynamics, you, you probably know Gromax, Amber, uh, NAMD, and there's more. Uh, analysis, AMBER tools, uh, you can also analyze with VMD or you can visualize data with VMD. Um, chemoinformatics, you have OpenBabel, open uh, RDKit, uh, ACPipe to parameterize ligands, QMMM approaches, uh, free energy like PMX, uh, more analysis, docking, uh, autodoc, haddock, modeling tools like Modeler, data analytics, TensorFlow, scikit-learn, and many, many more. You can name it. There's a lot of different uh, tools that we need to uh, use together in different workflows. And how are we typically doing that is uh, using shell scripts. So we are um, calling one step here, so calling one of the tools in the first step and then calling another uh, tool in the second step and so on and so forth till uh, we end up with the last step of the, of the workflow. That has many different uh, problems of uh, usability. Uh, so you need to understand the script. If you want to modify something, if you want to modify one of the parameters, uh, imagine that you have here many different command lines with many different tools being executed and being used. Interoperability, all the different tools, uh, they uh, produce different file formats. You need to convert between uh, them. You need to understand what uh, each of the tools needs to receive as an input and what they are producing as an output, they are uh, mostly not compatible one with the other. Then we have issues with the portability and re reproducibility. So if you want to export this script to another infrastructure or another machine, the same versions of the same uh, tools, they need to be installed properly in these machines in order for this script to, uh, for this workflow to run properly. And then you have, we have problems of scalability. If we want to uh, export that uh, script to, the, um, to that workflow to HPC centers, for example, and use thousands of uh, cores in a supercomputer, we will need to adapt that. So that's when we uh, started to think about developing a library. Uh, and this, is, this was the starting of the BioExcel building blocks. So what is the BioExcel building block uh, software library? It's uh, basically a collection of Python wrappers. It's nothing more than that. Well, it's something more than that, but it's the, the core of the, uh, of the library are Python wrappers on top of popular biomolecular simulation tools. Uh, this library is offering a layer of interoperability between the wrapper tools. That, that's the main point of the library, making all the tools, biomolecular tools, compatible and prepared to be directly interconnected to build these uh, biomolecular workflows that we want to uh, build. So how are we um, doing that? So we are doing that with a unique syntax. That means that all our building blocks, regardless of the tool that is being wrapped, they all have 
requires input files, output files, and input parameters of the tool, which we call them uh, properties. All of our building blocks needs inputs, outputs, and properties, no matter uh, what is the tool being wrapped. And you will see examples of that, of course, uh, during the sessions today. All the, the, these building blocks, we have divided them in different categories, and you will uh, see uh, why also during this presentation. We call them BioVB uh, modules, and uh, these categories are uh, divided depending on the functionalities of the tools that are being wrapped by these, uh, these building blocks. The second step after the building block is to build workflows. So we want to build and share biomolecular simulation workflows. And using this library, we just need to join and connect the building blocks together because of the interoperability. Uh, so we, with this uh, library, we have a, a, an easy way to build uh, the workflows, um, an easy way to develop and test the workflow using for example, interactive uh, graphical user interface such as the Jupyter Notebooks that you will see today. And you uh, actually have already worked with the Jupyter Notebook in the previous session with the Gromac session. So we will also use Jupyter Notebooks for our session this afternoon. Uh, you also have the opportunity to use a drag and drop graphic, graphical user interfaces such as uh, Galaxy and NIMES. We are compatible with them. Our workflows will be also reusable and reproducible. And uh, that is because we can package the workflow in a single Python script with a Conda environment, or we can describe the workflow with CWL specifications because we have specific specifications for each of the building blocks in the library, which is just a matter of joining together the specifications to have a description of the whole uh, workflow. And with that, we can share and reproduce the CWL workflow, the common workflow language workflow everywhere else. But we are also prepared for the exascale. That means that uh, our workflows built with this library can be used in HPC uh, centers or HPC supercomputers. And that's thanks to the adapter layer, a new layer of uh, interoperability on top of the tool interoperability that makes them compatible with uh, workflow managers, HPC focused, such as uh, these ones by Consorto or others. And finally, uh, we want a, a easy way to execute, to install and execute the workflows. <clears throat> and for that, we use, again, packaging uh, of all the library modules, uh, which allows easy installation and run uh, in many different infrastructures. You will see examples of, for example, the Conda packaging during the session today. <clears throat> this is uh, on the on one uh, hand, the packaging of the library. And on the other hand, we have this adapter interoperability. If the packaging is giving us infrastructure, uh, uh, is making our library infrastructure agnostic, let's say we can use it in different infrastructure. The adapter interoperability layer is making our uh, library workflow manager agnostic. That means that the, the workflows can be controlled and orchestrated by many different workflow managers, as many as we build adapters from. <clears throat> uh, as an example, we have uh, adapters for the Jupyter Notebooks, uh, PyComs, HPC, um, based um, workflow manager. We have NIME and Galaxy as a graphical user interfaces. And we are working of, uh, on uh, different workflow managers. Okay. Uh, the philosophy behind the BioXL building blocks, the FAIR. We, when we started all of this, uh, the development of this library, <clears throat> there was something that was called uh, FAIR guiding principles for scientific data that uh, uh, was giving a set of uh, best practices on how to produce scientific data. <clears throat> Basically, data should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And at that moment, like four years ago, people started to think about doing the same uh, using best practices, such as these ones um, uh, used in the scientific data, but in this case for research software. And that's something that was published uh, in last year, so FAIR principles for research software. <clears throat> and we started using these FAIR uh, best practices at the beginning from uh, the day one in the development of our uh, library. And that's uh, because we aligned with the Elixir bioinformatics infrastructure, uh, European bioinformatics infrastructure and BioXL together to build uh, 
and develop this library. And I will tell you uh, the meaning of this fair um, for the software library. Findable, we, we, our building blocks are findable because a library is easy to find from many different sources. That means that we have uh, the library uh, registered in the Elixir uh, register uh, infrastructure, the bio tools. Uh, we have a website advertising everything with all the links to all the documentation, and everything. Uh, you can find it really easy. Um, the platform is monitored, uh, technically monitored by OpenEbench, which is another infrastructure from Elixir. All the source code is in GitHub since day one. Uh, we have bio schemas so that all the search engines can find uh, easily find uh, all the information that we put on available online for the web uh, for the library for the software library so it is findable it is also accessible and that means that uh, uh, you can find them in many different sources but you can not only find them but easily install and use that's the meaning of accessible for the software uh, um, for the research software. In our case, we have uh, our library packaged in uh, different um, packaging managers such as uh, containers, Docker and Singularity, Bioconda packages. Our workflows uh, are um, packaged again in Jupyter Notebook tutorials and can be exported and you will see examples of that easily exported and uh, installed and run in different infrastructures. And we are also using graphical user interfaces. Um, those are just examples of the accessibility. We have, of course, interoperability. This, this is in our core of the library. Uh, our uh, different building blocks are completely interoperable between each other. That means that we are uh, um, adding this new layer of compatibility, interoperability between the different biomolecular tools that we didn't have uh, before. And finally, we have reusability. It's not just a matter of installing and using, but also reusing this. And for that, we, uh, for example, have documented, defined and described all of our building blocks and workflows using read the docs documentation, common workflow language, open API in the REST API part. And we also uh, are packaging the modules, as you, as you already know, uh, with Bioconda, Docker, and Singularity containers, with these adds an extra point of reproducibility. So all of these uh, four fair uh, best practices, we were uh, following them since the beginning of the development of the library. This is an important point. Okay, our building blocks are divided in categories. Uh, those are the ones that we have now. Um, the categories are, are depend on the functionalities of the tools wrapped. And this is very important. Every module is available from an independent GitHub repository. So if you go to the GitHub uh, source code in BioXL, the, rep the BioXL repository, you will find all the different modules, all the source code there. Uh, all of the modules, each of them has an associated Bioconda package, associated Docker and Singularity containers, and also read the doc documentation pages, all in a separated way. So all of these collection of building blocks, they all have their own uh, GitHub repository, Bioconda package, Docker and Singularity container, and read the docs documentation. This is very important. You will see why in a minute. Uh, what we have uh, so far is this BioBB common, which is the base package required, required to use uh, all of our bio, uh, Excel building block library, which is installed uh, anytime you install one of the other packages automatically installed. So input output is the collection to fetch data from biological databases, basically wrapping REST services from, from PDB uh, database, from Uniprot, <clears throat> from PDBE knowledge base. And the molecular dynamics building block collection, of course, is a collection to perform molecular dynamics simulation. Now it's wrapping basically Gromax tools, but as you know, uh, from the, this morning session, Gromax is a really powerful package with, with hundreds of different tools to set up and analyze. In this case, these ones, the tools wrapped in this molecular dynamics collection are the ones to set up and run molecular dynamics simulations. The analysis tools are wrapped in another collection, which is the BioVB analysis. 
to perform analysis over MD simulations and trajectories. And in this case, we are wrapping Gromax, but also we have different tools wrapped from the Amber tools uh, package, from the Amber molecular dynamic simulation package. We have the BioVP PMX uh, module, which is a collection <clears throat> to perform free energy calculations using the PMX software that you will also uh, have the opportunity to work with uh, during this BioXL summer school. We have the BioVB Extractor uh, Utils uh, collection to modify or extract information from a PDB, which is really, really useful. It's something that is uh, in every one of the workflows that we are building. The BioVB model collection to check and model uh, 3D structures, maybe missing residues, maybe hydrogen atoms. Uh, there's something important to check the structure before starting molecular dynamic simulation always also to mutate residues. Uh, and finally, the BioVB chemistry collection to perform cheminformatics analysis and, and format conversion. This is uh, particularly useful in uh, a virtual screening or when you uh, need to work with the small molecules. So all of these uh, different categories that you can find here, this is the website. I will talk about the website. I will introduce everything about the website and to uh, where you can find all the information about the, bu the building blocks uh, in the final part of this uh, presentation. But now just look at the different uh, modules that we have here and each of them with a separated source code in the GitHub, separated read the docs documentation, Bioconda package, Docker container and Singularity. And here you have the version. Uh, this is important because, for example, for the Bioconda packages, you have uh, one package for each of the different modules. And that means that, uh, for example, for the BioVV analysis, if you click on here, it will expand the module, the collection, and you will see all of the different tools that are wrapped in this particular collection. And as uh, I was telling you before, uh, this particular collection is wrapping two different uh, tools, Gromax, all the tools that are used well, all. Uh, part of the tools that are used uh, in uh, analysis of trajectories from Gromax, but also AMBER tools. In this case, the CPP track uh, um, tool from the AMBER tools. What this Bioconda is doing is that when you install the package, the Bioconda package for the BioVV analysis is automatically installing all the dependencies too. That means that it's installing the AMBER tools 19 and it's installing the Gromax uh, package uh, automatically. So you, you just install the BioVV analysis and the dependencies will be automatically installed. And that happens also to the rest of the modules. If there is a dependency, a program, if we are wrapping AC pipe, AC pipe will be automatically installed. If we are wrapping OpenBubble, OpenBubble will be uh, automatically installed. That's what uh, gives us this uh, a level of uh, reproducibility and um, portability using this packaging with Bioconda. Uh, just an example, don't try to understand this, uh, uh, this slide yet. You, I can assure you that you will understand that in the, uh, during today, during the different sessions that we will have today. Uh, but this is basically to illustrate you that we can run a REST API call to uh, download a particular ligand structure. And then we can run uh, something with using OpenBubble like add hydrogens to the ligand structure that we had already uh, downloaded here, minimize uh, the hydrogens that we have uh, previously added in this part here, and then use AC pipe, for example, to parameterize this ligand, all using the same syntax and all with uh, this compatibility, interoperability between the different steps. This is exactly what the BioXL building block is doing. And you will see this slide in the next session. Don't worry about that. You will understand all of this. Okay, a couple of success stories uh, before going to the website. Uh, the, these success stories are for you to illustrate, um, to see the power of the BioXL building blocks and uh, how we are using them to uh, in, in real scientific projects. So the first one uh, is uh, this uh, project that uh, we called we called it uh, PyMD setup, the workflow that we produced. Uh, it was called PyMD setup. You still can find it in the GitHub repository, but I uh, didn't uh, include here the, um, the link because it was uh, done 
uh, more than three years ago now at the beginning of the Bioxel building blocks is not compatible anymore with the Bioxel building blocks version that is now uh, the current version that we have uh, available from the website uh, but it was a uh, uh, for us really important because it was showing already the power of our build, our uh, software library. In this case, we were, um, the, the objective of the project was to uh, train a predictor uh, able to, from just flexibility information dynamics or flexibility information from the protein, understand if a particular mutation was pathologic or not. And for that, we used information from a particular uh, protein, which is the pyruvate kinase, um, which is this big protein, uh, homotetramer uh, protein, with, uh, with a final system in the molecular dynamic simulation of uh, almost uh, 400,000 uh, different atoms. And uh, this uh, it is an important protein because uh, you maybe know it is involved in the anemia disease. Um, for this particular project, we select a, a set of uh, a 200 different unmutated mutations from uh, Uniprot, for which we uh, know that uh, they are uh, pathological or not. This is what we use to train uh, our predictor. And to obtain the flexibility patterns for all of these uh, different mutations, we built uh, this PyMD setup workflow that was uh, successfully launched in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center uh, Mare Nostrum Supercomputer using this workflow manager that is called PyComs. Uh, we, the workflow was able to model the 200 different mutations and run the molecular dynamics simulation using four nodes per each of the um, mutation. That means that we used in one single job almost 40,000 different cores of the Mare Nostrum supercomputer. And we were able, and this is a, a screenshot of the results, and this is an RMSD uh, of the first nanoseconds <clears throat> of the 200 different simulations, we were able to uh, obtain trajectories and flexibility information that now we are using to uh, train the predictor, the pathological mutation predictor. So that was really nice for us and uh, actually we are using a, this um, the part of this workflow which is generating modeling the mutation and running the molecular dynamic simulation of course <clears throat> updated to the last version of the bioxyl building blocks in uh, another success story which is more recent <clears throat> which is a, a moving mutational analysis into the structural field for drug design in this case a little bit more complicated what we want here is to analyze the effect of a set of mutations, in this case just 18 mutations, on the resistance or sensitivity to a, a set of FDA approved drugs uh, for a particular protein, which is the EGFR epidermal growth factor receptor that uh, you may know that is uh, involved in many different tumor uh, diseases and cancer diseases. So uh, in this case, we are using, as I was telling you before, uh, the workflow to mutate uh, the protein and to run the simulations from the previous uh, workflow. In this case, we are producing 18 multiplied by five multiplied by 10 different replicas. So 900 different simulations with 90 microseconds of accumulated time. <clears throat> and on top of that, and to understand the effect of these mutations on the resistance or the sensitivity uh, to the drug, uh, we run 900 free energy calculations on top of these uh, simulations. And each of these free energy calculations, uh, it's another pre-exascale workflow inside the other workflow, <clears throat> which is this one that you see here, that is running a fast growth uh, thermodynamic integration uh, approach that uh, I'm sure that you will see in the, that you will have the opportunity to work with in the last session uh, of this Bioxo Summer School with the PMX uh, tool. So in this case, our workflow uh, contains, of course, using the Bioxo building blocks, tools wrapping the Gromax and the PMX, sorry, wrappers of the Gromax and PMX tools. Um, and it's running 200 for each of these free energy calculation is running 200 short MD simulations. <clears throat> so that means a lot of different uh, cal um, MD simulations, which are extremely parallelizable. And uh, again, using the SpyComs uh, workflow manager and the uh, Marenostrum Supercomputing Center, we were able to obtain uh, many uh, different delta delta CGs, many different uh, results that uh, allowed us to obtain a high correlation between these uh, final results and the mutation causing drug resistance. Actually, there is, um, you will have the opportunity to see uh, 
in a more um, scientific view, uh, this particular project in one of these of the last sessions of the Bioxel uh, Summer School. So Francesco Colizzi, one of my colleagues, a postdoc, a very talented postdoc uh, from our group, will explain you uh, in 10 or 20 minutes uh, the, this work in a scientific point of view. Uh, you can have, of course, uh, as all our workflows and building blocks, you can take a look at the workflow in the, our GitHub repository, in the Bioxel GitHub repository. Um, if you want more information about the Bioxel building blocks, you can always <coughs> refer to the, <coughs> um, to the journal publication that we managed to publish in the Scientific Data Journal last year. But uh, I have to say that in just one year of life, we have many different updates, different releases of the workflow. Uh, sorry, of the Bioxel building blocks uh, library. So uh, this is okay if you want to uh, take a look and understand um, the philosophy behind this software library for interoperable biomedical simulation workflow. But if you want to be uh, to know what is the last uh, releases and the last functionalities, you should go to the, our website. So here you have the URL, the link to the website. And basically, if you go to the about uh, section, you will see <clears throat> basically what you what I have explained in this presentation. So uh, an introduction about uh, what are the Bioxel building blocks, the fair philosophy, best practices on research, uh, software development, <clears throat> the different modules and categories uh, where we divided the different um, building blocks, infrastructure where you can run, install and run the building blocks and the workflows, workflow managers compatible with our library, success stories, Training material, which is really important and it's uh, really useful. Uh, document, uh, here you can find uh, presentations and videos such as this one, for example, and um, <clears throat> the people involved in the project. But what is more important for you is the availability um, tab here. So here you will find information about how to launch, how to install and download, how to, all the documentation, all the links and all the tutorials. So one by one, you will see you will find information on how to launch um, the <clears throat> building block. So have three different ways on launching. Launching means that uh, launching without a need to install anything in your local machine. Uh, we are working on a web page offering a pre-configured workflows so that you can, for example, set up a protein, uh, protein ligand, uh, something like the, the tutorials that you will see uh, today. But all of them pre-configured and working in a web interface. And there's also a, a REST API server. That means that if you don't want to install uh, all these uh, different tools and building blocks in your own local uh, computer, you can use this REST API server and uh, remotely uh, execute all the building blocks. Sorry. Uh, in our installation, we have a, a cloud infrastructure behind that. Of course, we are not offering uh, one microsecond of molecular dynamic simulation, of course, but you can use that to maybe set up a simulation. And actually, you have a tutorial on uh, molecular dynamic setup of a, of a protein <clears throat> using this REST API. So you can take a look at the tutorials and see that. You can also uh, run directly uh, the building blocks, a part of the building blocks, a selection. We have not all the building blocks yet implemented in a Galaxy project. This is a, an implementation, a local implementation of Galaxy, but you can try it and uh, they, they will be integrated in the tool set in Galaxy so that you can use also all the building blocks soon in the Galaxy uh, project. Mm. There's also uh, how to download and install uh, the library. <clears throat> Many different ways that you uh, have seen from the previous slides. You can download and install from GitHub uh, source code directly. You can uh, install and run from Docker uh, containers, from Bioconda packages, from Singularity containers, from Biocontainers, which is a registry of different uh, containers. From uh, there is also uh, the possibility to download. It's not yet implemented, but will be soon. Uh, the web server that I was uh, uh, explaining you in the previous slide, the web server with pre-configured workflows inside, 
uh, we are preparing a virtual machine with everything inside so that you can download the virtual machine and use this virtual machine in your own uh, premises uh, with the graphical interface uh, of the website inside the, the virtual machine. So it's another way to download and use the building blocks and the workflows uh, from this library. Important. Uh, source and documentation. This tab here is the one that is giving you the information about the different modules and categories with all the different links to the source code, uh, documentation, Bioconda packages, Docker and Singularity containers, and so on. If you, if you remember, if you click on one of these uh, modules, you will see a description of all the different tools that are wrapped inside each of the collections. And finally, we have uh, uh, the last section on the availability which tab, which is the tutorials. And here you have three different uh, collection of tutorials, installation tutorials, which uh, it basically is uh, helping you step by step on installing uh, Anaconda, which is a particular version of the Conda packaging that includes uh, the Python language, uh, the base packages, and 150 high quality packages that we are also using in the library. So it's a Python distribution for Anaconda, for Conda, sorry. Uh, all of these tutorials are explaining you step by step how, how to install easily, really easily install this Anaconda to a Mac operative system, to Ubuntu, or to Windows uh, operative systems. This is uh, everything that you need if you want to start working with the BioXL building blocks in your own machine. Then we have library versatility tutorials, which are uh, which um, show the power of uh, our uh, library in terms of uh, compatibility with workflow manager on how to orchestrate and uh, execute the workflow. So we uh, this tutorial is uh, helping you on uh, using our uh, workflows described using common workflow language. This one is helping you if you want to uh, run a workflow using the REST API of our library. And this one is uh, helping on um, building a command line workflow, which is uh, basically used in high throughput uh, execution. So if you want to, if you need to run your workflow 1000 times, or you have 1000 input, different inputs, and of course you need to run uh, this in a loop, uh, 1,000 times again, uh, you need the command line uh, workflow. So and this is helping you on how to uh, build and run uh, these particular workflows. And finally, and the most important one, we have the demonstration workflows tutorials, <clears throat> which are uh, basically uh, built to show the syntax of uh, our Bioxel building blocks and how you can build workflows, easily build workflows using uh, the library. And you have four so far, the protein MD setup, an automatic ligand parameterization, a protein ligand complex MD setup, which is uh, basically um, coupling the protein MD setup with the automatic ligand parameterization. And it's the one that we are going to use in this afternoon session. And finally, uh, mutation-free energy calculations with uh, contains a part, a small part of the, one, of the second success story that I have presented before, uh, how to run a fast growth thermodynamic integration using the BioXL building blocks. Of course, in a reduced way so that it can be used in a training session. You also have uh, the final tab of the, uh, of the website, which is build your own building block. And this is basically a guideline uh, that you can follow if you think that this one tool, biomolecular simulation tool that you really uh, uh, use or want, and it's not, it's, it's missing in our uh, BioXL building block library, uh, you can either tell us, or I, I'm really interested in having this biomolecular uh, tool uh, integrated in the library, or you can try to integrate it by yourself. And this is all the different steps that you need to follow. Of course, we have a template and we have built a template for you. You just, just need to modify the template, adding uh, the particular tool of interest. So it's uh, the BioXL building block library is a completely open source um, uh, software. You can, uh, of course, uh, collaborate <coughs> and contribute to uh, our software using the GitHub repository. 
to summarize uh, everything in just uh, four lines, what the Bioxel building blocks is uh, giving you, is offering you, is tool, basically tool interoperability so that uh, all the biomolecular tools that we are wrapping uh, can be easily interconnected to build workflows in an easy way. Uh, and these workflows can be uh, reproduced, can, it are, they have reproducibility and portability thanks to this packaging uh, uh, initiative that you, you have seen. Uh, but the Biosil building blocks is not magic, I have to say. Uh, you should be aware of that. So that means that you still need to know about the tool wrapped. Uh, for example, you have, uh, you have uh, attended a previous session about the Gromax, so you know uh, all the possibilities, the, all the different parameters, uh, all, all the tools in Gromax have. For example, you have an MDP file, which is a configuration file. You still need to know all of these parameters, what the, the meaning of them before running, for example, the GromPP or the MD run tool, which is being wrapped by our uh, library. If you don't know about this, uh, the meaning of this, you still, uh, you, you should know about this before starting to use these BioXL uh, building blocks. And of course, you still need to build your own workflows. Uh, although you have a lot of different tutorials and material that will help you in this process, uh, just modifying them uh, or adding new building blocks. And that's exactly what we, you are going to see uh, in this afternoon session. So uh, this is the end of the first session, but please uh, stay with me because in just five minutes, we will start with the second session, which is the workflow tutorials. Thank you.